Hey everyone, Cindy Olin here with Create Your Own Luck in Love, and I hope everyone's having an awesome Tuesday. I know I am. Sun shining behind me very brightly, and it's just a great day. Um, I wanted to speak into really opening up and letting love in. If you guys are on here, um, just feel free to send me a heart, post your questions below. I'm happy to answer them. And also know that tonight I'm doing a special free training that's going to dive deeper into this conversation. And why it's important is I've seen a lot of things coming up lately and you know, I just have to share this, this is really cool. Um, one of my clients that just stepped into my upcoming program of Love University, uh, I like to call it Love You, and you know, she stepped in and she's super excited to let love in and remove anything that's really standing in the way for her for bringing in lasting love. And what was great is I got an email from her just a few minutes ago and she said she is, um, she, she'd been having a little bit of a challenge where when she would meet men that she found interesting or even just men in general, she was just freezing. Like she didn't know what to say and she almost couldn't smile or open up or anything. So I don't know if anybody's experienced that. I know I have. And she was, you know, her subject line was, I didn't freeze. So she had gone to a concert the other night and she had engaged in conversation with a gentleman and it was joyous. She had a really great time and it was great because she said, you know, I just flowed. I felt at ease and I didn't freeze. And this was, you know, by her making a decision to step in and make a commitment to herself, to shifting her love life, um, it, it opened up those blocks. I've seen that before. I just thought it was kind of cool and I wanted to share. So, um, so I'm, I'm talking a lot to you guys about removing the blocks that stand in our way of really bringing in the type of loving partnership that you desire. So I will tell you one thing that will be really, really extremely helpful for you for opening up to bringing love and loving partnership in. Number one, it's clarity. Clarity on what it is you want, what kind of partnership you want how you want to feel in a relationship. So making that a writing exercise. Um, one of the things I ask my clients to do is write down all the qualities they're seeking. And then we, I go through an exercise with them that actually breaks it down into their five top values, their five most important must-haves in relationships or their, that their partner must have. And also, what are you bringing to the table in relationship? Now, it doesn't have to be, you know, a ton of money or anything like that. And I think a lot of times as women in this society nowadays, we put a big focus on that. Oh gosh, if I'm not where I wanna be in my career, um, you know, maybe I'm not worthy of the type of partnership that I really desire. It's not true. You can be working towards those things that you really want and bring and let love in. So those limiting thoughts and beliefs can really hold us back. I don't know if you guys saw the email that I sent about our Love Talk Live today. Well, my friend, um, my dear friend, and also she's my business coach as well, Shanda, she and her amazing love got married, um, not last weekend, but the weekend before, and they um, 
they had done things a little backwards. They had brought in a baby and they're looking to bring in baby number two. Well, they've just gone through their second round of IVF and it didn't work out. And one of the things that she looked at is, you know, where's the disconnect? Why am I not receiving this? And what she came up with is she was focusing a lot on her age, like, oh, I'm 41, I'm, you know, I'm aging, I'm getting older. And that putting a question in her mind of receiving, because energetically, that can hold one back to bringing in what what you really want, right? So it's getting the guidance around that mindset and really opening up to possibilities. Another thing, so what she immediately shifted is that her age is not a factor. She's no more than one person that has had a baby at 41 years old that are extremely healthy and happy and she's now focusing on the fun of it and you know the time that she gets to have with her incredible husband creating that and and really receiving and enjoying life so she gets to let go of that to energetically bring in her baby right and and that's how it can really work, you guys, and it can work when it comes to love. And it's also really making that commitment every day. What am I going to do today to let love in? And what is the outside talk that might be preventing me from bringing it in? So let me give you an example. I love, um, I love this example. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know who Dr. Wayne Dyer is. He passed away, gosh, a few years ago now, maybe one or two years ago. Um, but he was a famous writer, philosopher, speaker, um, you know, definitely more on the spiritual realm and mindset, right, belief. And... Dr. Wayne Dyer had wrote in one of his books, I think it was called Wishes Fulfilled. It's he, he has written great stuff, by the way, you guys. Um, and I remember one day I was listening to this on audio as I was, um, I was doing a hike in um, Torrey Pines in San Diego. And what he was talking about, he was... Um, he was living on the East Coast at the time in the, um, I believe, the Massachusetts area. And he was, um, he had ran into a woman. Don't quote me on exactly where he was living. And, you know, he was walking and a woman stopped him and she said, um, how do you like living here? And he said, well, it's great. I love it. And she said, well, are the people nice? And he said, and, and she said, and, and what about the traffic? Because we're looking to move out of New York City to get away from the awful traffic and the people. And he said, well, if you think the traffic and the people are bad there, they're going to be the same here. And she looked at him a little perplexed, thinking that's not obviously what she wanted to hear. But that was her mindset. Because if she was projecting, oh, the people in New York aren't nice, the traffic's really bad, um, it's hard to get around, I just, you know, it's going to be the same here. So anywhere you go, there you are, you're going to have the same frustrations if you don't change your mindset around it, right? I prefer warmer weather, so I live in San Diego. That's part of the reason why I moved out of the Northwest. It is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful there. I love it. It rains a lot, and it's not, it, it's, it, it's still great, 
and if I, so it's really looking at a mindset perspective. So if you think, oh, there are no men in my area um, that are single or all the good ones are taken, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that, then wishes will be fulfilled. And so watching your languaging around what your heart desires is helpful. And doing any visualization is also really helpful too. Um, so, you know, for example, if you desire to have that loving, connected partnership, spend some time in the morning and in the evening really visualizing that, really feeling into that. And, oh, thanks, Angela. Um, and, and really, you know, feeling it like it's real, welcoming it in and welcoming in what your heart desires. I go through different exercises. And in fact, if you guys join me tonight at 5 p.m. Pacific, I'm going to go deeper into an exercise that, um, that, that I go through with my clients on let love in and this is a powerful exercise and if you use this consistently my goodness you're not only that and committing to different steps that you can take to opening up to the possibility right understanding what your emotional triggers are that's a big one what are your emotional triggers? What triggers you? And if you feel something triggering you, I encourage you to write it down and really fill into that. Because a trigger, when it comes up, it's actually meant to be broken. It wants to be broken. So it's, it's understanding that and how to do that. And, you know, lastly, I would just invite any one of you, if this, you know, if you're feeling called that this is your year for love, then book a call with me and we get to have some fun. We get to play and explore where it is, you know, a little bit deeper around what it is you want, what's happening for you around that and helping you to open up to possibility. And I get to give you some strategies within which, some of which you can absolutely apply into your life. So I recommend doing that. I'll, I'll make sure that we, we post a link below. And if you guys have any questions for me today, you know, it's when you, you decide, you declare, gosh, I want to bring that lasting, loving partnership in. What does that look like for you? And what am I willing to give up in order to let love in? Right? So um, there's, there's always something energetically that we give up. Maybe that's a past relationship that isn't really serving us and maybe what we're getting out of it is creating safety right or the thought and belief that one person you know that one person from the past is the one and they're not showing up for you right now opening up to possibility opening up to positively having fun letting it in bringing and really being conscious of that. Um, yeah. Breaking, I'm, I'm seeing a question here. So what do you mean by breaking a trigger? Well, emotional triggers, um, those are things that we can actually feel them in our body as they come up. Or we, it's hard to even control sometimes, right? Maybe somebody says something to you like, um, like, gosh, 
I think you're really judgmental, right? That's a projection for, from them, from something in their life. Maybe it triggers you, right? It's, it's really staying, learning how to release that, learning how to be conscious of, okay, so if somebody's saying that I'm, you know, I, I mean, or I don't, you know, call them enough or whatever it is, it's, and that triggers me into a fear space. A trigger is a fear. So learning what your triggers are. Maybe that trigger is a fear of abandonment. Maybe somebody says to you, gosh, I don't really, um, you know, I've got to leave early for my, you know, to get to another appointment when they meet you for coffee. And maybe that triggers something because it's a letting go of control or maybe you feel like, gosh, I'm, I'm not that important to that person. And instead of focusing on that, focus on what is the fact. Well, the fact is your friend showed up to meet you, right? What is the story I'm telling myself? So you can break it down there. Well, my friend only wants to spend an hour with me and has to go to another appointment. I don't feel valued enough because in my mind, I was thinking we would meet for coffee and take a nice walk along the beach and really, really get the chance to catch up, right? Or so what's the fact? The fact is, is my friend showed up, they're there, and my friend always shows up. Right? I'm just using that as an example. Um, and, you know, those little things can trigger us, you know, especially in relationship. If we've gotten intimate with someone, oh boy, um, that can bring up all kinds of emotional triggers. So if the man is, you know, let's just say you're dating someone and he show, he says he's going to be late or he shows up 10 minutes late. Well, look at the fact. Is it, is it normal that he's late? Is he someone that shows up late a lot? What is your answer? Yes or no? And if the answer is yes, and it feels like you're being disrespected or your time's not being valued, that's something that you get the opportunity to open up about and say, gosh, you know what? I, I understand how life is busy. So if you, you, you can, instead of making it like, you're always late, Tom, I, you know, this is, you know, this is, feels really disrespectful and it's just, it's not very nice and, um, you know, I just don't like it. So what does that do to a person? Automatically, that can put him on the defensive. So when he shows up, even if you're triggered, you could say, hey, you know, um, you know, I noticed that we, you know, I know that we were, were, you know, on for 6 p.m. tonight, and I've, I've noticed that there's a tendency to run a little bit behind. Is it easier for us to get together closer to 7? Right? And, you know, sometimes people that have the tendency to run late, they're people pleasers. I've had that tendency myself. I've really broken that for the most part. I'm not perfect, but they're, they're, they have a people-pleasing tendency. 
So they're trying to do a lot. They're trying to do too much. So look at it as a positive rather than a negative. So you want to make sure to set yourselves up for success. And you could say, gosh, you know, if it's easier to get together closer to seven, I'm totally great with that. That way I could get a couple of other things done before we enjoy our evening. I really value timeliness. How can I support that in happening? Right? So being calm and looking at it as no one's doing anything to you. And if you get to communicate your feelings, your wants, needs, and desires. And, you know, when letting love in, you want to make sure that someone's on the same page as you. So if you really want to get married and the guy that you go out with has no intention of getting married, isn't even interested in a committed relationship, and you're super attracted to them, you need to go the other direction. You just do. It's going to set you up for heartbreak and continue to validate those limiting thoughts and beliefs of, oh, I'm not enough, you know, why doesn't he want me? When in reality, maybe he would if he was in a different spot, and maybe he'd really love to spend time with you, but in the way that he wants to, not in the confines of a committed relationship. Is that fair to you? No, it's, it's not about settling for less. It's about you get to choose what you bring in. So anyways, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if anyone has any other questions, you can post it below. And I'll also post a link to um to set up a time set up a free call with me and it's really a free ready for love call which will open you up to the possibilities of really bringing in lasting love and join me tonight 5 p.m pacific 6 p.m mountain time 7 p.m central 8 p.m eastern i don't know what time it is any place else but i really hope to see each and every one of you and i'm sending you so much love and abundance in your life Okay, bye everyone. Mm -mm. Bye.